Gospels, do you ever put yourself into the story or parable? For example, in the parable of the prodigal son, which son are you more like? In the parable of the soils, what kind of soil are you? In Luke 18, 10 to 14, Jesus tells a story of two men who went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood by himself and prayed, God, I thank you that I am not like other people, robbers, evildoers, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week and give a tenth of all I get. But the tax collector stood at a distance. He wouldn't even look up to heaven but beat his breast and said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. I tell you, this man, rather than the other, went home justified before God. For all those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. Jesus often gives us contrasting people or situations to consider and to reflect on who or what in the example best represents us. Notice in this story that the Pharisee is not just contrasted to a sinner, like a robber or adulterer, but even worse, the dreaded tax collector. In our passage today, Mark chapter 2, verses 13 to 17, a contrast between tax collectors and Pharisees shows up again. As we read the story, consider if you're more like Jesus or the Pharisees in how you would approach the tax collectors and sinners. Here it is, Mark chapter 2. Once again, Jesus went out beside the lake. A large crowd came to him, and he began to teach them. As he walked along, he saw Levi, son of Alphaeus, sitting at the tax collector's booth. Follow me, Jesus told him, and Levi got up and followed him. While Jesus was having dinner at Levi's house, many tax collectors and sinners were eating with him and his disciples, for there were many who followed him. When the teachers of the law who were Pharisees, saw him eating with the sinners and tax collectors, they asked his disciples, why does he eat with tax collectors and sinners? On hearing this, Jesus said to them, it is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I've not come to call the righteous, but sinners. Jesus gives us numerous examples in scripture of how God's love for people has no bias or boundaries. With Jesus, the only untouchables are those unwilling to be touched. And unlike the Pharisees in this story, these tax collectors and sinners had responded to Jesus' request to follow him. Like most societies, Jewish culture at the time of Jesus had divided people into two groups, acceptable and unacceptable. Being acceptable was based on both ritual purification laws and moral behavior. Tax collectors, were often mentioned by Jesus because they were the most extreme examples of those in society deemed unacceptable. To the Jews, the worst of the worst. The tax collectors in Jesus's day were Jews who were colluding with the Roman government to collect taxes from their own people. They were viewed as traitors to God and to their country. General sinners, Jews who didn't follow Mosaic laws were considered better than tax collectors. In both the Luke and Mark scriptures I read, Jesus makes it very plain that he does not judge people in the same way the religious leaders and their society did at the time. No one was too unacceptable for Jesus to love. His message was available to all who had ears to hear. He touched and healed lepers, the physically unclean. He healed those demon-possessed, spiritually unclean, and interacted with sinners, tax collectors, and Gentiles, morally unclean. Jesus demonstrated to his disciples and to us the distinction between the false and prideful outward religious practices of the religious leaders and the humble and repentant sinners who opened up their hearts in true faith to God. He clearly states in the Luke passage, this man, the sinner, rather than the other, the Pharisee went home justified before God. For all those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. As you place yourself in the Mark chapter 2 account where Jesus calls Levi and eats with the sinners and tax collectors, do you find that you're, you are like Jesus, open to loving those 
all those people, even those whom society or the church deems unacceptable? Or are you more like the Pharisees, practicing bias or judgment against certain individuals or groups of people who have beliefs or practices that you find unacceptable? I think, if we're honest, we as individuals and as the church too easily stand in judgment rather than love. Judgment is a posture of pride and love a manifestation of humility. Romans 3 reminds us, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. None of us are deserving, but for the love of God. Jesus said, I've come into the world as light so that whoever believes in me may not remain in darkness. If anyone hears my words and does not keep them, I will not judge him, for I did not come to judge the world, but to save the world. Brothers and sisters in Christ, let us be conduits as individuals and as a church for the light of Jesus to shine freely, without bias, to all people that they would know the love of God, believe and be saved. I challenge each of us to stand closer to Christ in prayer that he might humble us and expose and heal us of any judgmental spirit that festers inside, which keeps us from living out the fullness of God's love and grace. Thanks, Fremont, for, uh, for watching and have a great week. God be with you.